Okay, another example. Can we be sure that this initial for you problem have to have exactly one answer, namely unique solution to this? Well, let's go ahead and use the existence and uniqueness theorem for this, right? You see that dy dx is already isolated, so here is the function f of x, y. Sometimes, if the dy dx is not isolated, just do some algebra to isolate that. Anyways, this is what we have, x minus 1 over y. And the point now is 3, 0. Well, you see that if I plug in 3 into here for x, we will have 3 on the top, minus 1 over, plug in 0 in here. This is undefined, right? We have a trouble already, isn't it? So, I will just tell you guys, this is not continuous around 3, 0. That is not continuous around 3, 0. So, the theorem fails right away, right? And let me ask you guys this idea again. Can we be sure how many solutions that we have? No, we cannot say anything at all. This right here could still have exactly one answer, but I could not be sure now. I seriously cannot be sure. I cannot say anything. I cannot make any promise to you guys. Okay? Does this have to have two answers? I cannot be sure neither, okay? Can I say this has no solution? No, I cannot say that neither. In fact, I don't know how many solutions I have right here. The best thing for me to do is just go ahead and solve. But now, I will just say that we cannot promise you anything. I cannot say, I cannot say this has a unique solution. I cannot say it has two answers. I cannot say it has no solution. I just cannot say anything, okay? Because the statement failed, because the original function, the f right here, is not continuous, so end of story. If this is not continuous, you don't even bother have to check with uh, the partial with respect to y. And now, as I said, since I don't know how many solutions that I have, when I solve, I have to be extra careful, right? And let's see if I can do this. Multiply y on both sides, multiply dx on both sides, we will have y dy equals to x minus 1 dx, right? And then we can integrate, integrate. On the left-hand side, it is y squared over 2. Don't worry about the plus c. This is equal to, this is going to give us x squared over 2, and then minus x, and then plus c. Okay? And then, we can plug in 0 for y. So let me just do that. 0 squared over 2, and this is equal to plug in 3 for dx. So we have 3 squared over 2 minus 3, and then plus c, like this. Alright, so this is what we have. On the left-hand side, this is just 0. On the right-hand side, this is 9 over 2 minus 3 plus c. And you can, of course, do some <laughs> fraction if you would like. This is the same as uh, 6 over 2. So, of course, you have positive 3 over 2. Bring that to the other side. c is negative 3 over 2, isn't it? And uh, we pretty much have the solution right here. Let me just put this down. Y square over 2 equals to x square over 2 minus x. And the c is that, so we'll write this down as minus 3 over 2, like that. We're pretty much done, right, in terms of the solution. And here is the catch for how many solutions that you have, technically speaking. Let's try to isolate the y. Let's multiply everything by 2. Let me use blue right here because I used red for this already. Multiply everything by 2, okay? So you will see that 2 times this is just y squared, and 2 times this is just x squared, 2 times this is just minus 2, and 2 times that is just, well, 2x right here. 2 times this is just minus 3, and this is what we have. How can we isolate the y? You take the square root, isn't it? Well, it cancel out. What do I need? Right here, plus minus. First answer, y is equal to positive square root x squared minus 2x minus 3. In fact, this is the first answer, right? The first answer. Second answer, let me just indicate that. Second answer, 
y is equal to negative square root of x squared minus 2x minus 3. Let me tell you, both of this will make this work. Okay? Both of this will make this work. And both of this, of course, they'll satisfy the initial value as well. And you see that whenever uh, you cannot be sure you only have a unique solution, seriously, sometimes you may end up with more than one. Sometimes um, uh, you may end up with no solution. Sometimes you may still end up with one answer. And you see, in fact, we have two solutions right here. And now let me ask you, do we have any constant function in this case? No. Because, let me just write it down, okay? Just let me write it down. Know that this is the bad habit. Don't just say, hey, this is y of 3 is equal to 0, and just always say y as a function of x, constant function, 0. Okay? Don't just say whatever this number is, and then it's always the an answer. No. This right here is definitely not a solution to this. Because if you say y as a function of x, it's always equal to 0. You put 0 in here, you ruin the whole differential equation already, right? So this right here, don't do it. We still end up with two answers though, right? Positive square root and also the negative square root. 